Hello everyone and very warm welcome to the channel. Embedding models are a critical part of any pipeline which deals with your own data. Embeddings mean numerical representation of your own data. So what happens is that whenever you give a text prompt or text data to any large language model, first that data has to be converted into numerical representation or vectors or embeddings. That is the job of an embedding model. On the channel, we already have seen heaps of embedding models in the past, like OpenAI's embedding models, we have Nomic embed, and the list goes on and on and on. In this video, I am going to show you this CDE small embedding model, which is at the moment by far the best embedding model as per the MTAB benchmark. And Besides of that benchmarking, I feel that the way it is doing embedding is quite interesting. It is using contextual embedding and I will also be uh, briefing you about as what exactly that contextual embedding means. And then we are going to install it in free Google Colab and then we will see how it works on a custom data set. Before I do that, let me introduce you to the sponsors of this video, which are AgentQL. AgentQL is a query language for extracting data from web pages quickly, easily, and at scale. You can use the Python SDK to run your queries in production using Playwright and use the browser based debugger for optimizing queries in real time on any web page. AgentQL is a robust alternative to Fragile XPath and DOM CSS selectors as it uses the power of AI to analyze the page structure to find the data you are looking for and I will drop the link to the website in video's description so do check them out. Okay, coming back to this contextual document embedding version 1 model, let's try to understand what exactly this model is. So this model naturally integrates context token into the embedding process. This is, as I said, one of the best models under 400 million parameters on the M tab leaderboard at the moment for text embedding models with an average score of 65, which is quite a good score. Now how it works is quite simple. As you can see on your screen, this embedding model needs to be used in two stages. The first stage is to gather some data set information by embedding a subset of the corpus or the data set using their first stage model from the left as you can see. And then the second stage is to actually embed queries and documents conditioned on the corpus information from the first stage. Also you can uh, divide these stages into two separate pipelines. You don't have to do it in one go. You can do the first stage offline and then you can only use the second stage weights at inference time. And it all depends upon your use case. But for this one, we are just going to go stage by stage. So that said and done, let's go to our free Google Colab, which you can also access at colab.research.google.com. Sign in with your free Google account and you should be able to use this Colab. Let's go to runtime and then change runtime to T4 GPU, which is a free GPU provided by Google. Let's first install the datasets library. Another cool thing about this Google Colab is that most of the stuff uh, is already installed like Torch and Transformer, so we don't have to install it again, but datasets we have to install. And you can see that it is being installed at the moment, shouldn't take too long, should be any minute. Let's wait for it to finish, that is done. Let's click on plus go to add another cell. And then here we are importing the transformers library and then we are downloading the CDE small version 1 model and it uses a BERT tokenizer which is quite a famous tokenizer. And the model is not that huge, you will see that it is quite a small model. As you can see, it's almost there, it, the size is just 1.12 gig, that's it. And embedding models are normally quite small. So let's wait for it. Shouldn't take too long now. Almost there, you can see that the model is downloaded. Now tokenizer is downloaded. All the configuration is downloaded. Everything is done. It is just checking it out and everything is finished. 
Next up, let's grab a data set. And I'm just grabbing this Fika data set, which is a small data set for Corpus. You can grab your own if you like. And it all depends upon your own data. And of course, if you are using it with your own company's data, you would have to convert it into this data set like this or any data set and then load the data set with the live DD. And that makes embedding more grounded, by the way. So that is done. Now let's just prefix for the query in the document. Query is the prompt we will be using and document is the data set we have just given it. So I have just set some prefix, which is a requirement. And then let's define our corpus. Corpus means the amount of data we are using. So next up, let's just massage the data set a bit. We are just getting this title and text that is done. And this is just a looping through it with tokenizer. Now let's see how the stage one works. So as I mentioned earlier, this CDE model works by first getting a set of embeddings from corpus documents that is in, intended to be representative of the overall corpus. They first sample a number of documents from the corpus and this model is trained with 512 documents from each context and then it gets their embeddings from their first stage model. So let me run it and that is done. Let's also do the data setting embedding as I just mentioned in the next cell and don't worry about this code I'm going to give you the link to this notebook so that you can also play around with it and it is just a simple very small data set so it shouldn't take too long and it is fairly quick and that completes our first stage where we have now embeddings in the documents context and now that we have data set embeddings so now we can in the stage two we can use them to embed queries and documents like normal all we need to do is to provide an extra argument data set embeddings in the cde code and i will show you the code and no matter what your data set is you can use the same code which has been provisioned by them and that is a cool thing so all this code is doing it is just massaging the document and then it is embedding the queries and documents like normal that is all it is doing so these are the documents similarly let's also get the query or prompt embeddings same thing that is also done and now we have normalized our embeddings in these two now we can compute their cosine similarities by doing a simple matrix application and this is what embedding model does, right? In the rag application or stuff like that, where it just do the similarity search. So for example, if I just generate this heat map, you will see something like this, where it is showing what is similar and what is not similar. And then you can very easily check this with heat map. So that's it guys. This is how easy it is to use this model. And then it really becomes quite grounded when it comes to your context from your own data set plus your queries. Let me know if you have any questions. I will drop the link to it in video description. Play around with it. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.